dragon blazing across the sky ten times faster than a supersonic bullet. That's how Elon Musk described the dramatic re-entry of SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule from the Crew 11 mission. And for a moment, it really did look unreal. A fiery streak over San Francisco on January 15th, after undocking from the ISS. It's so amazing. But here's the part that usually gets lost once the clip goes viral. Speed alone doesn't tell you very much. In fact, NASA has flown spacecraft that came back to Earth significantly faster than Dragon ever does. So this isn't a story about headline numbers or who holds the speed record. It's about what those numbers actually mean and why, in real-world spaceflight, the most impressive part of Dragon's return has very little to do with how fast it's moving. When Elon Musk talks about Dragon crossing the sky at more than 10 times the speed of a supersonic bullet, he's referring to the capsule's velocity at atmospheric interface, roughly 7.8 kilometers per second. That number sounds extreme, but it's also familiar. It's essentially the same speed flown by every spacecraft returning from low Earth orbit, including the Space Shuttle, which typically re-entered at about 7.8 kilometers per second as well. Orion, by contrast, came back much faster. During Artemis 1 in 2022, NASA measured peak entry speeds between 11.0 and 11.5 kilometers per second as the spacecraft returned from lunar distance. Apollo missions experienced similar velocities for the same reason. Leaving Earth's gravity well and returning from the Moon adds substantial orbital energy that must be dissipated during re-entry. The Space Shuttle even flirted with this boundary from the opposite direction. In 1990, during STS-31, the mission that deployed the Hubble Space Telescope, the orbiter reached approximately 7.96 kilometers per second on re-entry, the fastest of the shuttle program. That mission placed Hubble into the highest orbit ever achieved by a shuttle, and the higher the orbit, the more energy the vehicle carries when it comes home. Re-entry speed, in other words, is a function of where you've been, not how advanced your spacecraft is. This raises a fair question. Does faster re-entry mean a better spacecraft? In practice, re-entry velocity is a measure of mission profile, not engineering superiority. What matters is how much energy the vehicle must shed once it touches the atmosphere. Low Earth orbit requires a circular speed of about 7.8 kilometers per second. Lunar trajectories add roughly 2 to 3 kilometers per second of excess velocity, resulting in peak speeds around 40% higher. That additional energy translates directly into more intense plasma formation and heat flux, often an order of magnitude higher than orbital returns. Higher speed does not mean higher performance, it means higher stress. Lunar re-entries generate 10 times the heat flux, risking shield ablation and g-forces. To survive, Apollo and Orion use skip profiles over the Pacific for braking. It's like dipping shallow into thin upper air, like skipping a stone on water to break a bit and bounce back out to cool off before repeating and finally plunging in. This helps spread deadly heat and g-forces over 30 minutes instead of instant burnout while aiming for rescue ships nearby. Even so, the super-hot friction vaporizes outer heat shield layers to carry away heat, requiring costly factory rebuilds that slow reuse. Dragon skips none. It endures a simpler low-orbit fireball drop with milder stress, quick parachute splashdown, and fast reflights. However, Having a simpler low-Earth orbit re-entry doesn't make Dragon less impressive than NASA's lunar spacecraft. It actually highlights a form of engineering that many NASA veterans once described as impossible. Crew Dragon is the first American crewed spacecraft whose design center of gravity is operational tempo. From the earliest architecture reviews, SpaceX treated flight rate as a hard requirement rather than a long-term aspiration. Since the Demo-2 mission in May 2020, Dragon had shifted from a certification milestone into permanent infrastructure for U.S. human spaceflight. Capsules such as Endeavour completed six crewed missions, while Endurance and Freedom flew four. All of them carried astronauts to and from the International Space Station across a span of years. That record alone would have been considered extraordinary in previous NASA programs. What matters more, however, 
is the spacing between those flights. Dragon's turnaround is measured in months. In historical terms, that cadence borders on unprecedented. The same pressure vessel, avionics stack, propulsion system, and primary structure are reused with targeted inspections rather than full disassembly. NASA certifies every refurbishment step, but the process itself is streamlined because Dragon was designed to tolerate reuse from the beginning. Nothing about this system assumes rarity. Dragon returns from an orbit roughly 400 kilometers above Earth at approximately 7.7 .7 to 7.8 kilometers per second. Compared to lunar return velocities, that is modest, but frequency reshapes the engineering problem. A spacecraft that flies once can afford mass penalties, bespoke labor, and conservative margins everywhere. A spacecraft that flies repeatedly cannot. Weak assumptions surface quickly. Costs compound. Minor inefficiencies become structural liabilities. Dragon survives that reality because its architecture assumes repetition. Automation replaces manual intervention. Recovery is simplified. And most importantly, thermal protection is treated as a consumable component within a reusable system. That mindset, not raw speed, is Dragon's true breakthrough. Anyway, if you're enjoying this kind of deep, no-hype breakdown of spaceflight, give the video a like. It really helps. And if you want more analysis like this, feel free to subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments. Apollo's command module was optimized for singular achievement. Each capsule flew once and was never intended to return to service. The program's constraints were geopolitical urgency and mission assurance, not sustainability. In that context, expendability was not a flaw. It was an efficient choice. Orion, despite being separated from Apollo by decades of material science and computational tools, inherits a similar philosophy. It is designed for deep space missions with Earth return velocities exceeding 11 kilometers per second. Those conditions impose extreme thermal loads, and Orion is built with thick margins to absorb them. NASA currently states a target of up to 10 flights per Orion capsule, but those flights are expected to be separated by long intervals. Artemis 1 illustrated why. Orion's Avcoat heat shield protected the vehicle as intended, yet post-flight analysis revealed uneven erosion and cracking patterns that required extensive investigation. None of this compromised crew safety, but it underscored the cost of designing for rare, extreme environments. Orion prioritizes durability over cadence. That choice is rational for lunar exploration, where missions are infrequent and the stakes are maximal. Dragon occupies the opposite end of the spectrum. It does not attempt to span all mission profiles. It focuses narrowly on orbital crew transport and optimizes relentlessly for that role. The Space Shuttle demonstrated that reusability in human spaceflight was possible, but also how it could fail operationally. Each orbiter flew dozens of times, with Discovery reaching 39 missions. On paper, the shuttle appeared to deliver on its promise. In reality, the thermal protection system became its Achilles heel. The shuttle relied on thousands of reusable silica tiles, combined with reinforced carbon-carbon panels on leading edges. These components were theoretically reusable, but practically fragile. After every mission, technicians inspected each tile individually. Minor damage could ground an orbiter for months. Turnaround times stretched far beyond original projections, and per-flight costs ballooned into the billions. The system accumulated what engineers call engineering density, complexity layered on top of complexity, until operational flexibility disappeared. The vulnerability of the tiles to debris impacts was not merely theoretical, as the Columbia accident tragically proved. Dragon's designers deliberately avoided this path. Rather than attempting to preserve the heat shield intact, Dragon treats controlled material loss as normal. It is an acceptance of physics rather than a fight against it. Crew Dragon's heat shield is built from Pika-X, SpaceX's proprietary evolution of NASA's phenolic impregnated carbon ablator. The material consists of a lightweight carbon fiber substrate impregnated with phenolic resin, 
engineered to manage extreme heat through ablation rather than insulation alone. During re-entry, the outer surface chars and pyrolyzes, chemically breaking down and carrying heat away as material vaporizes. On a typical low Earth orbit return, only about 1 to 2 centimeters of material ablate from tiles roughly 8 centimeters thick. The remaining structure stays intact, keeping the capsule's interior near room temperature. This approach is grounded in proven heritage. NASA's original PICA protected the Stardust capsule during its 12.9 km per second Earth return in 2006, the fastest re-entry survived by any spacecraft at the time. SpaceX's PICA-X and later PICA-3 variants refined that concept for consistency, manufacturability, and robustness. Although Dragon is certified for its 7.8 km per second operational envelope, the material itself is capable of far more. SpaceX has stated that upgraded PICA formulations are designed to tolerate lunar return velocities in the 11 to 12 km per second range, driven by Starship's future lunar and Mars missions. In Dragon's case, that capability represents a margin rather than a requirement. Reusability here does not mean preserving material, it means preserving the vehicle. Orion's Avcoat heat shield reflects a fundamentally different set of priorities. It is also ablative, but constructed using a honeycomb structure filled manually with ablative material, then cured and machined. The process is labor-intensive and expensive, but it yields high confidence for rare, high-energy lunar returns. The trade-off is scalability. Avcoat shields are difficult to produce quickly and are not designed for frequent replacement. Orion's heat shield is effectively single-use, followed by extensive inspection and analysis. The shuttle attempted reusability at the material level. Dragon pursues reusability at the system level. Dragon's heat shield is replaced for each crewed mission, but replacement is fast and economical. Some Cargo Dragon missions have reused tiles entirely, demonstrating additional margin. This architecture eliminates entire classes of failure modes. Minor surface damage does not automatically imply mission loss. Manufacturing control reinforces the advantage. SpaceX produces Pika-X in-house, enabling rapid iteration based on real flight data rather than theoretical assumptions.